Hi, Sam. Thanks very much for talking to us. Thank um, you I want to start off by talking about uh, Drag Me to Hell. And the story reminded me very much of the classic sort of ghost stories, in particular Night of the Demon and the works of its author, M.R. James. Uh, was any of that in your head when you were writing the script with your brother? Not when we were writing the first mm. story that it was based on, but then when my brother and I wanted to expand it into a screenplay, I think we were very much influenced by Night of the Demon, and we even put some of the tribute shots in for Jacques Tournay to mm. pay homage to him. Oh, brilliant. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that's really striking about the film is uh, Mrs. Ganoush, uh, the casting, um, and that's Lorna Raver. And I was wondering, how, where did you find her? And were you looking for, very, for a very specific-looking person, or did you have an idea in your head when you started? Well, we found Lorna through our casting agent, and she lives in Los Angeles, and we had the pleasure of interviewing a lot of really fine actresses for the part of Miss Ganoush plays mm. the terrible old witch of the picture. Mm. But we really needed someone who had a lot of different qualities all in one. They had to create a realistic character, somebody that you could identify with and had to have sympathy for, and that could ground the audience in a reality of someone who needed help on their bank loan and someone who was proud and had to humble themselves to ask for, beg for a chance, even when they, perhaps the bank felt that they didn't deserve it. And then we needed someone who also could endure f the makeup that we had to put them through. Mm. A lot of facial makeup, a lot of uh, contact lenses in the eyes, prosthetics. But in addition, they had to have a physicality that would allow them to endure these very physical fight scenes, mm. very rough on the actresses that were involved in it. And Lorna had all of those qualities. Um, and one thing that's really striking about the film is the balance of horror, which is genuinely scary, and the slapstick, um, well, slapstick elements. I mean, is that hard to actually balance? To you know, you don't take people out of the horror, but you give them a laugh, or you give them something that is quite surprising. How, how do you balance that? Well, I think um, it wasn't that part wasn't hard for me, but mm. I don't want to claim it worked. I've got yeah. to see with more audience members. But I like to put a lot of black humor in the films. Mm. I think a lot of filmmakers believe that if you have a job of building suspense that oftentimes uh, a humorous moment will relieve the suspense a certain amount and allow you to build it to an even higher plateau. Mm. So I use the humor as a tool to help me build suspense and horror in the picture. Um, and one thing I liked about it was that you didn't, hadn't gone completely CGI. There was still quite a lot of in-camera effects, like the levitation during the uh, ex or semi-exorcism. -ex Is that important to you, to try to keep it in-camera? Um, and you used Greg Nicotero again, who you'd worked with several times before. Uh, is it important to do that and not just go CGI? It is important, wherever mm. possible in this picture, to use physical effects as opposed to CGI. Mm. And I say that because, for me, um, when you have a CGI shot, you usually have an actor or actress, and they're in front of a green screen, and you're directing them saying, and the balloon is getting higher, it's getting larger, and it pops, and you hit them with a little wind effect, mm. and they supposedly react. But what's really happening is they're hearing your words, and a translation process is taking place where they hear the words, they have to then imagine the thing out there, and then they have to react to it. So that's the first problem, is a lack of an absolutely real reaction. And then the second problem is, in post-production, an animator will then draw that balloon, create it in the computer, what have you, put it what he thinks, where he thinks the island of the actress would be, and make it grow larger, and the director will direct him, but still there's a dichotomy taking place there. There's an animator and an actor, and the animator is just trying to, in post-production, approximate what the actor's reacting to. And it's a dichotomy that I think the audience, who's very, very perceptive and smart, perceives. Whether they know what the problem is or not, they don't want those two discordant things happening in their head. They want to see an actress reacting in reality to something, and the reaction is real and immediate and connective, and the actress doesn't have to pretend. It's both all happening at once, and the audience knows that that's real somehow. And I think it's, therefore, much more effective. Mm. Now, the time may come very soon when digital effects have advanced to the point where we can have an on-set, real-time recreation, approximation of what the finished effect will be, and the actor could react to it. And at that moment, I think digital effects will be as good as physical effects. Excellent. Uh, one of the things I liked about the film as well is, is it's very, it starts very quickly, and it's very economical. I mean, it's very sort of teasing. There's certain, and, and there's that, that scary sequences during the daytime. Um, was, that, uh, did, you know, was that conscious? Were you, did you want to get the story moving quickly? Well, um, it was really a desire to tell a horror story that took place in Los Angeles. Mm. And Los Angeles is a place mm. of constant daylight, forever daylight, sunshine. And we thought that that would be an interesting, different flavor to color our horror film with. 
Um, one final question, very technical. Um, in the sandwich scene, when the, in the bank, the Muzak playing through is any Morricone's tract from the um, Dario Argento film, Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Why do you use that? Well, my editor is a great music fan, Bob Morosky, mm. and uh, that was the temp track that he used, and I just, oh. I loved it as Muzak. Yeah. It played beautifully, yeah, yeah. and I love Morricone's work, and so we... Uh, try to get just that had, track because that was brilliant. That was that just completely. I just thought that was amazing when I heard that that kick in. It just immediately reminded me of so many horror films. <laughs> it's great. great. So thank you very much. Thank That's you great. So Thanks much. so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you.